everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Today, we are learning all about the trachophilia. Now, this is actually an open brain coral, or as a lot of people just call them brains. This is probably one of the most popular LPS coral out there. One of the most known and probably the most variety of colors in a large polyp stony coral. Prices on them, you'll usually have to spend about $100 nowadays to get one of these. And for some of the crazier colors, some of the larger sizes, you can see them going for four and $500 or even thousands for some of the super rare ones that people just really want to get some crazy oranges and purples and yellows all on the same one LPS coral. So they can be a very expensive coral, but they are also a very beautiful coral care level so they're actually easy there isn't much to it taking care of these they tend to be a good easy coral for beginners and a lot of experts like them because they have such a great color on them temperature you want to keep it 72 to 78 dkh 8 to 12 ph 8.1 to 8.4 and your salinity 1.023 to 1.025 everything's basic there you're not having to do anything crazy colors of course like i said it is every color on the rainbow a lot of the ones in the video you can see have all different crazy colors on them. You can just Google these and you will see all kinds of different colors on them. Diet, so they are a photosynthetic coral, so they're going to be feeding off the light. They also really like to be spot fed. So pellets are definitely one you want to feed them. They even will eat some liquid food too, like reef roids or oyster feast. You squirt that in the water column, they'll go crazy. Now, at the slightest sense of food, they will open up looking like a volcano just erupting with these feeder tentacles out trying to grab food and bring it to its mouth to eat. It is a really cool experience to see. What's really fun is placing the food on the outer rim of the coral and watching it move its skin around just to get that little pellet up to its mouth so it can eat it. Now, one thing you want to watch out for when you are feeding your corals like this one, they are a pretty slow eater unless you are just perfectly putting that pellet right on their mouth if you are putting around and they have to move it towards it it can take them a little bit to do that so you want to watch out for your fish and shrimp that are real aggressive towards feeding because them going towards that coral and trying to bite that pellet and trying to eat some of that food it could really hurt the coral so make sure you have some kind of distraction in there while you're feeding your corals whether it's a net or tapping on the glass on one side, trying to feed him on the opposite side while you feed him, just something to keep them off of that coral so he can have time to eat that food. Origin, so they do come from Australia along the Great Barrier Reef and around Indonesia. Venomous, so they're not really a venomous coral. They're not gonna sting anything surrounding it. If the, anything was actually gonna sting you, it'd probably be those feeder tentacles that stick out, but those are also pretty short. They're not like a galaxy coral that would be flinging feeder tentacles, you know, half a foot long. So you don't have to worry about putting them by something that's going to get stung. But you also, on the flip side, this coral can be stung. So you don't want to put them right beside a torch coral or right beside an anemone. He will get the fire shot out of him. So make sure you keep him somewhere in a spot where he has plenty of room to inflate so that he's not having to worry about getting stung by anything. Placement, usually I like to put them in the bottom in the sand bed or just near a rock structure that is towards the bottom. They usually do the best down there. Up high at the top usually isn't good for them just because the lighting's too intense or the water in the current is way too strong for them. So in the bottom on the sand bed will be a great spot for them. Current, so you definitely want probably a low to medium current. You want enough current on them to keep the water column pushing them because detritus can actually grow on top of them and settle and that'll create algae and other problems on his skin. So make sure you got enough current blowing on them that it keeps them real clean. And you'll notice they are very happy when they're very inflated in the right spot. If he's staying super shrunk up, you definitely want to check him out and make sure there's nothing stinging him or he's just in a bad spot with too much current. Lighting, I would say moderate. They really don't take any crazy high intensity lighting. 50 to 100 par levels are usually what you want to shoot for. The ones you're seeing in the videos are under two Hydra 26s, and it's a lot of blues in there. There's not much white blowing on them. So you definitely want to have just like a moderate lighting going on. If you do have trouble with lighting, please leave some comments down below. I'd love to help you out. But that's also why we like to put them in the bottom 
near a cave or just on the very bottom. That way the lighting's really perfect levels hitting them as they get through the water column. Tank size, any, doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter for these guys. The main thing is just making sure they have plenty of room and also making sure they have plenty of food to eat as they are living in the tank. Now for your water parameters, some key ones to keep up with are your calcium, your alkalinity, and magnesium. You want to make sure those are on the right level at the beginning before putting this guy in here because these are going to help him grow a good exoskeleton. It's going to keep him healthy. It's going to keep him strong throughout the life. So make sure you stay on top of those. Nitrates and phosphates, you don't want to get too high, especially whenever you're spot feeding them. You don't want to overfeed them. So make sure you keep those levels in check. I'm not saying you got to keep them perfectly zero, but you don't want them to go over like, you know, 0.5 to 1. Keep it below that and you should have a very healthy trachophilia. Anything higher than that spikes in the water can really hurt them. So make sure you keep up with your water changes and just test those water so you can make sure everything's staying in line for them. Now, a lot of people always ask about fragging these corals. It's not really a coral you want to frag. They are such a slow grower, and most of those that actually are fragged are through one of those very fancy power saws that you can cut. But even when they do that, they are almost just hoping it will survive the actual frag. So most of the time, just keep them. One, don't frag them. Let them grow. Let them get huge, and that'll be pretty much your trachophilia. They aren't much of a, they don't split like anemones. They aren't going to, you know, release little babies around the tank or anything like that. So most of the time when people get one trachophilia, that's what they have for the rest of its life. Flatworms can sometimes be an issue with these. Really with any LPS coral, you run into issues with flatworms every once in a while. Definitely watch out for that, especially whenever you first get them in. Usually a good dip in some coral medication will help get those off of them before putting them actually in your you know, show tank. So a good dip will help him if he ever gets it later in his life. Just take him out, put him in some dip, and then put him back in the tank. And usually that'll get rid of him. There are other fish that will eat these flatworms and keep them clean. A little rash you can get that'll uh, eat those. You can also do that. After that, there really isn't much more to go over for taking care of these. The brain corals are one of the most popular ones to get in the tank. They are very pretty. And they really aren't that hard to take care of. And they love to eat too. So make sure to feed them plenty if you got one in your tank. Hope you all have a wonderful day. If you do have any questions, whether it's your lighting, your placement, how much current you got, please leave some comments down below or reach out to me on social media. I would love to help you out and show you what I'm doing with mine. Thank you all again for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our new t-shirts and I will see you all later. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.